Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Skeeter Harris with Mac Village Media, uh, and today with me is Kurt Schmucker. He is the Senior Product Manager with Parallels. Good afternoon, Kurt. Hi, Skeeter. How are you? Doing great, buddy. Doing good. So, uh, for those of you that uh, you know have not seen one of uh, Kurt's and, uh, and mine hangouts in the past, uh, just to give you an introduction to who uh, who we are, uh, Kurt is the Senior Product Manager at Parallels. Has been there for uh, a little over two and a half years now. Prior to that, uh, Kurt worked both at Apple and Microsoft uh, for about a decade each, and has written actually three books. Uh, the first book was on object-oriented programming for the Mac, and then he also, you might remember, um, the product Virtual PC from Connectix, which was ultimately purchased by Microsoft while he was the VP of the Mac division there. Uh, and uh, Kurt's actually spoken all over the world on various technical topics. And uh, if you do catch Kurt not working, one of the things you'll find Kurt doing is that uh, he's actually uh, uh, studying and, and, and has been involved with uh, uh, ja uh, actually the Japanese uh, fencing uh, uh, for over 30 years now. So, uh, Kurt, uh, uh, again, welcome. And, and again, for those of you that don't know, my name again is Skeeter Harris uh, with Mac Village Media and uh, have been working with uh, Parallels now for several years. Uh, not only on these Hangouts, but also uh, with several uh, videos for, 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 uh, for the team. So uh, today we're going to talk about Yosemite with Parallels Desktop 10 for Mac. Uh, if you did not see Kurt and my uh, last Hangout, which was approximately you know, tw uh, two to three weeks ago, uh, certainly we can put a link in the, in, in the Hangout for that, but we did an overview of Parallels Desktop 10 for Mac. Today we're going to talk about really Parallels Desktop 10 and the cool features that Parallels has been able to implement with Yosemite specifically, which of course just came out uh, uh, late last week. So uh, Kurt, uh, over to you. Thank you, Skeeter. So as you mentioned, what I'm going to talk about today are the Yosemite enabled features in Parallels Desktop 10. So because, of, because I want to cover those in some detail, I can't go over all the other features in Parallels Desktop. Features that have been there for many years, like copy and paste and drag and drop, and how you can run your Windows apps, things like this. So I'll, I'll focus today on Yosemite-enabled features. Um, and I made a couple assumptions when I put together this talk. I'm assuming that people who are watching this are either Parallels Desktop users or are potential users of Parallels Desktop. And they've either already installed Yosemite or they're thinking about doing it. And so what I want to talk about today are the additional features you get if you're running Parallels Desktop on Yosemite. So just to um, make sure everything's really clear about what versions I'm using, Yosemite's been out for a while now in terms of a beta. I'm using the customer release that came out last Thursday, and you can see the build number and stuff here. And that, that's really the only way to verify versions. And also, on the same day Yosemite was released, Parallels released a uh, update to Parallels Desktop 10, 10.1, and that's the build I'll be using. So today my plan is to do mostly live demos, but in a couple of places screenshots are just easier to do, and so I've done those. And again, if you're interested in a general overview of Parallels Desktop, or even specifically Parallels Desktop 10, you want to look at the other videos that Skeeter and I have done. And we'll put links into those in, in the, the page for this uh, uh, Hangout. But I'm only going to talk about Yosemite-enabled features. Hey, so, and, and, and Kurt, just to, inter just to interject here, a couple points. One, if you go to that Google Hangout where you found this link, the trailer is actually uh, about a nine-minute video that Kurt did that demos Parallels Desktop 10, you know, just non-Yosemite-specific. Non <clears throat> and then secondly... Uh, we've enabled the customer or the uh, the interactive uh, questions and answer uh, uh, component here. So if you are watching from Google+, Plus, make sure you type in your questions. Uh, we'll take them as they come in, and uh, we'll hopefully we can get this interactive. So, Kurt, back to you. Very good. I, I do uh, love to get questions on the air, so please do, don't hesitate at all. And I hope you're seeing my screen now. And what I'm going to do is begin my presentation on features uh, in Parallels Desktop 10 that are enabled if you're running Yosemite. So if you're on Yosemite, you have all the basic features of Parallels Desktop. And of course, Parallels Desktop 10 uh, has full support for Yosemite as a host OS, 
And here you see some screenshots I've taken on my Yosemite machine where I'm running in the one screenshot Windows XP and Windows 8 as guest OS's on Yosemite as a host. And in the other screenshot, I have various versions of the Mac OS running as guest OS's, and, um, including Yosemite. So Yosemite is fully supported as both a host and a guest for Parallels Desktop 10 if you're using Update 1, which came out about a week ago. Now, there are actually a list of features that are, we, I would call Yosemite-enabled features in Parallels Desktop 10. And I list them here. What I'm going to do now is just show them to you one at a time. So I'm going to close down my presentation. That's enough slides for right now. And we'll go to Parallels Desktop running Windows 7. And you should see that on your screen now. Yep, we do. Very good. So, as you know, uh, everybody and their brother now has a cloud service. There's Dropbox. There's um, uh, 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 OneDrive. OneDrive from Microsoft. There's uh, iCloud. iCloud uh, Drive from Apple. Yep. And, of course, we enable those in Parallels Desktop in Windows when you're running on a Mac. So if I go to my Windows environment here, you can see up here, I see both Dropbox and Cloud Drive and PhotoStream listed as servers that are automatically mounted. Now let me tell you why this is important. Cloud services like Dropbox work by putting a folder on your machine and synchronizing that folder with the cloud. It's a wonderful feature. I've used Dropbox for years. However, that takes up some storage on your Mac. And we saw some users of Parallels Desktop earlier versions ago had installed Dropbox on their Mac and installed it on their Windows virtual machine. And so they had two folders that Dropbox was synchronizing with the cloud, which is doubling the amount of storage you're using up on your Mac. And that's not good for anybody. So what we've done in Parallels Desktop, and we did this a few versions ago, is make the, full, the cloud sharing just automatically work, both from Mac to Windows and Windows to Mac, when you're running Parallels Desktop. And of course, the new features in Yosemite, like uh, iCloud Drive and iCloud PhotoStream, those are enabled automatically. So I can open up one of those, for example, here and see the photos I put in PhotoStream. I can go to, go to iCloud Drive and see my various folders there, which I added a couple yesterday. And I can also go to Dropbox and see my, my, my files there. So the advantage of this, of course, is just economy of storage. We also added one more thing. And the other thing was we have added the ability, if you open up an application uh, from, Windows, from Windows Office, Here's a Word application, for example. I'll open this up, and when I go to save this or save as, I will see those cloud servers available right here in the Save As dialog. This is a convenience. You could do it manually. You could save the file to your desktop, and then you could move it to the cloud uh, by yourself. But here, we just integrated it and made it much more seamless and much more usable for the user. And so this is a, a feature that we've, we've enhanced for Yosemite for the new cloud services that Apple is providing. You probably saw in the reviews of the iPhone 6 and I, I, iOS 8 the warnings not to enable iCloud Drive until you got Yosemite. Those are really good warnings. But now when you move to Yosemite, you want to turn that on. It gives you a bunch of nice capabilities. and um, now is the time to do it, and don't do it until you go to Yosemite because then you'll be locking out your Mac. Because unless you're on Yosemite, you can't get to iCloud Drive. Okay, so that's one feature. Another feature we added in Parallels Desktop 10 that's Yosemite enabled, and I actually think this is one of the coolest features in in Yosemite in general. And I'm really happy we could bring it to um, Parallels Desktop. Here, I'm opening up IE. And I'm going to select some text in IE, like this. And if I right-click on that text, I can share that with any of the social media services that I've enabled on my Mac. For example, if I select Facebook, I can post that text to my Facebook page just like that. No copy-paste. Automatically, you do it. It's a really great little feature. It integrates. just makes your life easier. 
And of course, it works, as you saw a moment ago, with Twitter, with Facebook, with LinkedIn, and um, you, know, you can also use, you can also use iMessage. Don't forget. So exactly right. if you want to send it as a text message, you can do that too. So and and with mail, if you use the mail dot app on the on the Mac. So this is a nice integration that Apple provided in Yosemite, and we were able to bring that piece of Yosemite goodness over to uh, Windows and Windows apps. A related feature is the integration between the Mac and the iPhone. And that looks like the following. I'm going to go to uh, the, the Parallels web page that lists our, our main switchboard number here. And I'm going to highlight that number. And when I right click, I'll get the message, call this number. And what that will do is, if you have an iPhone that's available on, on the same wireless network, you can actually call that number. And I'm doing that now. And you'll see this little little uh, notification up here that that's happening. And in a moment, you should hear our voicemail message on the. Thank main you for calling Parallels, the leader in virtualization and cloud computing solutions. For technical support, please. Pr so, what this gives you is the ability to use your Mac as a speakerphone, and all you have to have is a a, a phone running uh, iOS eight, and it has to be on the same wireless network as your Mac, and you have to have iCloud Drive turned on with the same Apple ID in both environments. If you do, after you do all those things, which is a little bit of a hassle perhaps to set up, once you do, those things just work. And it's really a scream because I was at home the other day, and I leave my phone and the charger by my front door, and I got a call on my Mac. It was really, really cool. So I encourage you to be able to, to, to link those two things together and use that feature in uh, Yosemite. And we're really happy that we brought that over to uh, Parallels Desktop. And so even from IE or from Word for Windows or any other application uh, on Windows, you can make use of these features and share text and social media or use your phone or receive phone calls. It's really very, very cool. Hey, Eric, just to just to interrupt you there for a minute, the uh, you know what's what's neat about that that continuity feature that that Apple's called it, and certainly that's one of their top uh, selling points, if you will, of Yosemite, uh, is that if you have an iPad, it will also allow you to receive and send calls using your iPad again, as long as that iPad is configured on the same uh, same account uh, with iCloud. So exactly right. Yep. And the only thing you have to make sure is your Mac and your phone are on the same wireless network. So if you have a, a portable Mac, like I do, a uh, MacBook Pro, you want to make sure you put that on the same network as your phone when you're going around, and that will automatically do it. It's really quite nice, um, and I, it's a really a great feature Apple's added to Yosemite. And again, we're real happy to have brought it over to Windows and Windows apps also in Parallels Desktop 10 Update 1. Yeah, Kurt, I can tell you that it really works great. I use it when I'm in Microsoft Office apps. It, it, it certainly saved me when my phone has not been right next to me. Uh, you know, in addition to that, uh, I think what's cool about it is that uh, it just makes that whole Windows experience that much more seamless between the Mac and, uh, and Windows. So it's just really cool. Well, well done on that one. I have to agree. And kudos to Apple for adding this feature and to the Parallels uh, engineers who added it to Parallels Desktop. Let me continue. And so, just a reminder for our, our watchers, I see we have quite a few going here. If you have questions, don't forget to, to drop them in our little Q&A box here on the Google Hangout so we can uh, try to address them as, as we go here. Great. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting some questions from people. So another new feature in Yosemite is the ability in several places in the Mac OS for developers to add what are now called extensions that add capabilities to the Mac OS. This is a kind of a brand new area for Apple to really uh, jump into. And because of that, our developers at Parallels want to take advantage of that. And so they've added extensions for several of the, of the uh, Apple apps. Uh, and I'll show you some of those now. So if I open up Spotlight, if I search for something like, say, Windows 10, I see a bunch of things. If I happen to get folders or files, I can look at those files here, and that's great. If I happen to select a 
virtual machine, not only do I get some information about it, like this virtual machine is not running right now, but I can actually, with these do controls down here, configure it, start it up, that sort of thing. So we're adding capabilities to Spotlight to enable you to not only configure a virtual machine, but to start it and control it. And that I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it's, a, it's a really nice Spotlight feature. And of course, now it's in the very center of your screen. And so again, it's right front and center for your, your use uh, and looking at your vir virtual machines. And similarly, we do the same thing um, if Uh, when you use Notification Center. So I'm going to show the Notification Center over here, and you'll see that Parallels Desktop is shown in the Notification Center, and not only is it showing that I have one virtual machine running, it's actually showing me its current performance. It's using none of the CPU, because I'm not doing anything in there right now, and it's only using 9% of my RAM. I have a lot of RAM on this MacBook Pro. If I go over now into Windows, and do some things like launch a couple of apps. I'll launch PowerPoint. I'll launch, oh, let's see, uh, Calculator and Paint. I was like, don't forget Paint. Can't forget Paint. And now go back over to the Notification Center, and you see those blips right here? And to the usage, they're small, I agree. But we're seeing that. And this is really useful. Uh, it gives you the ability to monitor your virtual machines. What's going on? Where's my memory being consumed? Why is my Mac slow if it is? Oh, it's certainly not uh, due to Parallels Desktop because it's using like 0% of the CPU. And even when I were, were launching apps or things like this, you see only tiny blips here in the, in the performance. So we, uh, Parallels Desktop really consumes only a tiny amount of your uh, processor re, uh, uh, capabilities in the Mac. And now, of course, if I were to do something like launch AutoCAD and be do, doing some complicated renderings of a 3D model, you'd see greater blips there. But you know, people have, are often under the impression that virtualization is really, really slow on the Mac. And that's just not the case. Um, the amount of, of uh, processing power the Mac has now is so great that even with a very small percentage of it, a virtual machine runs just fine. So um, this is a, a nice way to see this, and you can configure um, your, your notification center display, a parallel desktop, and what you want to see. It. I moved up here to the top so you can see what's going on. I am an unusual user of parallel desktop. I'm often running multiple um, virtual machines at the same time. You know, I, I admit that the average user doesn't do that, but I do, and this is a nice way for me to see what's going on on my Mac and what my processor utilization is uh, in terms of virtual machines. So it's a great feature. So, so Kurt, besides being able to see that virtual machine, if you actually had multiple virtual machines running, you, we'd see them all listed there. Is that correct? Yes, we would see them all listed there. Okay, and then the last question for you on that topic would be, if I've got a virtual machine that's listed but it's not running, do I have the ability of starting that virtual machine from the notification center? Uh, I don't believe you do because you don't see it listed here at all. You okay. do that from Spotlight. You do that from other places. Um, you can't do it from Notification Center. Gotcha. Now, as you mentioned, I'm going to select this virtual machine here now and hit Spacebar, and that's going to give me Quick Look. And Quick Look does give you the ability to both configure and um, start a virtual machine. Quick Look, as you may remember, came into the Mac OS oh, several versions ago and allows you to get a um, like a, a quick look at a file. I want to see what it what it basically looks like. Its first page, for example, for example. And the Mac OS has support for the file types that the Mac OS has, considers as native. So PDF, text files, image files like JPEGs or PNGs. But it didn't have support for virtual machines. It wouldn't know what to do with that file type. So Apple added the ability in Quick Look and Notification Center and Spotlight to add extensions. And the Parallels Desktop Engineers took advantage of that and added extensions in all these places. These happen automatically when you install Parallels Desktop 10. There's no work you've got to do. They're just there, and these things just work exactly the way a Mac user expects it to be the case. 
Now, uh, one more feature is, and, and this is small, but it's important. You know, Apple did change the look of uh, Yosemite. The windows look different and so on. And you can see here that Parallels Desktop takes advantage of that. So you see the, the, the little bit taller window title area right here. You see the new, new flat buttons um, here for um, size of the window. And the functionality of these have changed a little bit. So if I get rid of this window for right now, and if I hit the green button, which used to mean expand a little bit this window, this is actually the button now in Yosemite to go to full screen. So if I click on this, what will happen is my VM will go to full screen on the Mac, and you can see now I'm using the entire big screen I've got here to look at my virtual machine, in this case PowerPoint, and is shown as a full screen app. Um, this is a nice feature, especially when you're going to do something that takes a lot of screen space. And I can go back very easily to the view I had before. I can leave full screen like this. We used to have a special control over here in the title in the title bar of the window, but it didn't make any sense to have that there because Apple now provided that capability right here in the standard green button. He did add the following thing that I use a lot in Parallels Desktop, and that is I want to see the activity that's taking place in my virtual machine in these little icons here at the top of the screen. And this is showing me that you know the disk is being accessed, the network is being accessed. Things like this, which are always useful things to know when you're doing something. Why is this taking so long or whatever? And we also send notifications to uh, the Mac when things are happening inside your virtual machine that are going to consume a lot of processor power and therefore make your virtual machine slow. The typical thing people are going to see is when they're installing updates to Windows. That takes a lot of, of, of computer power. And so Windows will be a little bit slower then. We send you a notification so you can see, oh, Windows updates happening right now. The responsiveness of the virtual machine will be a little bit lower. And so, you, oh, that's a, I understand, I understand what's going on. That's great. And it'll be over in just a few minutes. Hey, Kurt, so, let, me, let, me, let me interrupt you here. A couple comments. Cool. Actually, one comment and a question. Uh, first off, uh, our friend Andrew Love uh, you know, has joined, and he just wanted to say that he's really enjoying our Hangout. Cool. And uh, he's finding it informative. And, and Kurt, you uh, Thank you for the comment. I'm sorry, Kurt. Uh, Andrew, thank you for the comment, and we're, we're thrilled to, uh, that you're here. Uh, from a question perspective, uh, the gentleman by the name of Harold uh, left it, and then he, I think he, he pulled that out. But, but Kurt, one of his question was in the notification pane there uh, in uh, Yosemite where you show uh, the, uh, the virtual machine running, you had uh, a CPU line and I believe a memory line. Yep. And he'd like to know how to make those appear, because by default, as you know, they don't show up. Oh, um, actually, I thought they showed up by default. I could be wrong. Um, you could be that you have to go over here and say, show uh, performance. Actually, actually let, let me interject. What you do is uh, if you go to the uh, notification pane, Kurt, if you click on the name of the virtual machine, that will expose those uh, those interactive uh, lines. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Skeeter. My mind came out. By, I must have done that a long time ago. I left it that way. <laughs> Good point. So here you would see each of your virtual machines. If you want to see a little graph of the performance, you can just click on the name. Thank you, Skeeter. So, Harold, hopefully uh, hopefully you're still watching, and, and that answered your question. And uh, sorry if it took a little bit long for us to, to get to it. Back to you, Kurt. So those are the basic features that, that I would call Yosemite-enabled features in Parallels Desktop 10 today. You want to be running the, the, the consumer release of Yosemite, and you want to be running update one of Parallels Desktop. So that's Parallels Desktop 10.1. The, the main focus of update one, which came out last week, was Yosemite-enabled features. There's one other feature that was added in that, that update that I think is so cool, I have to show it, but I want to be very clear that it's not um, restricted to Yosemite only. And that feature is the ability. Guys, you, you snuck it in on everybody, Kurt. That's, a, that's really a cool feature that you're going to jump to. Uh, the feature is running the Windows 10 Tech Preview. So uh, th this is really nice to be able to do this. And I give Microsoft a lot of credit because they made this easy to get and even more so, they made feedback really easy to do. There's actually a feedback um, 
uh, app built into the into the OS, and you can send them feedback. I've done five or six feedback items to them, so that's great. It was a little bit troublesome to install this. Not horrible, but a little bit. So what we did in, in update one was we added the ability to do the installation of Windows 10 Tech Preview with a single button click. So you just say, I want to make a new virtual machine. And down here in the bottom third of the window, we have a bunch of free OSs you can get. And the second one is Windows 10 Tech Preview. You click on this, and then you just say, what language do you want? Do you want the English version? Do you want the Chinese version? Whatever. And then it'll install. It'll install. It'll put in the product key. It'll install your virtual machine in your um, uh, control center, as you see here. So I am unusual. I have lots of virtual machines running. But one of them right here you see is the Windows 10 Tech Preview. And I'll launch that now. Okay. Hey, Kurt, while you're launching that, uh, for those of you that have not looked at uh, uh, Windows 10 Tech Preview, it's actually a pretty amazing feat that uh, Parallels has been able to accomplish because if you've done that, as you know, you have to go to the Insider Program website, you have to register, you actually have to download a Windows app from within a virtual machine in order to, to, to get the ISO file to then go through this process manually. And with one click, Parallels has enabled the ability for anybody uh, to try this new version of Windows. I agree that's really great. We did this for Windows 8 when it was in its various preview stages and it was very popular among our users. We did the same thing for um, uh, Windows 10 Tech Preview. And the biggest visual change you can see in Windows 10 is the modification or the return of the start menu and the modification of it to include live tiles on the right hand side. So you see the tiles I've configured there, the top one being feedback to Microsoft about things I like things I don't like, things I had trouble with in Windows 10. And you can see that these um, tiles are live. They're getting you know, weather updates and news updates automatically. That's kind of cool. And they also, thank goodness, brought the ability to shut it down much more easily to find than it was in Windows 8 when it first came out. So that's really great. Um, hey, now, Kurt, Kurt yeah. can I interrupt you here? Bruce has jumped in with a question. Uh, Bruce is asking, is there a time limit on use of Windows 10 Tech Preview like there was with Windows 8.1 without license? Yeah. I'm sure there is. I would think I, so. I, no. I don't remember the exact date. Uh, my guess is that it's something like from now till you know six or seven months in the future. That's a guess. But yes, previews are always time limited. And that's both to protect you and to protect Microsoft. It's a very reasonable constraint they put on the system. Um, but it's long enough for you to actually do a reasonable amount of work and so on. And, and Kurt, isn't isn't the uh, at least this uh, you know this uh, new version of Windows? Aren't they slating this for something like middle of uh, 2015? I think, or even later, right? It's it's quite a while from now. And if they follow the same approach they used in Windows 8, there actually will be several tech previews um, and different builds and updates and so on. So if you aren't interested in doing it right now when, when Windows 10 is just out of the gate and you want to wait for it to, to be a little bit more mature, that's just fine. Do so. We will most probably update our um, uh, button in the new VM wizard to get the latest preview that is available. And I just want to show you that that, that button is available almost regardless of what OS you're running on your Mac. So any OS that supports Parallels Desktop 10 so that means you know, Semini, Mavericks, Mountain Lion, and Lion, all of those will be able to download the Windows 10 Tech Preview uh, with a single button click. And now, to be sure, any OS uh, like Windows 10 is a non-trivial download. Uh, this was about 4 gigabytes, if I remember correctly. And in, in my home and my network connection, it takes, it takes about an hour. Your mail, mileage may vary, but it's not like a two-second download. It's going to take a little while, but the installation is completely without you getting involved. It just installs, and it's great. It automatically makes you as a user in Windows by grabbing your uh, you know, name of your user identity in uh, the Mac and adding that to Windows 10. So it's done really slick, and I think it's a nice feature. 
if you're uh, somebody who likes to see what's going on uh, in the Microsoft environment and we're, are willing to or want to send feedback to Microsoft about what, what's good and what's bad, this is a really easy way to do it. And Kurt, it's also what's interesting is that it's one of the fastest installations of Windows I've ever seen, uh, and actually performance overall is it's it's pretty impressive for uh, for uh, really a tech preview of of a new uh, operating system. Completely agree. Completely agree. It's pretty impressive. So those are the things I wanted to talk about today. Um, I hope you find this these Yosemite enabled features in Parallels Desktop 10 compelling. And if you're on the fence about moving to Yosemite, then this might make, make you even more interested in it. If you are on the fence about moving to Parallels Desktop 10, then this will um, give you the ability to do so. Uh, and Kurt, I've got one last question. Uh, this came in from Dennis LaPlante actually late last night. Uh, he's asking, I would like to know if I can upgrade a Mavericks virtual machine to Yosemite in Parallels Desktop 9 running on OSX Mavericks host, uh, latest version? So, very good question. I have not tried exactly that test myself, but I'm going to say that it's probably not going to work if you're running Parallels Desktop 9. Yosemite as a virtual machine is not supported in Parallels Desktop 9. So you're going to want to move to 10. I have, in Parallels Desktop 10, converted a Mavericks virtual machine to Yosemite by running the Yosemite installer in the in the VM, that worked just just fine for me. Right. So, but on uh, nine, I don't think it was going to work. You really want to move to ten. Ten will also give you the Yosemite enabled features that I've showed today, and so that's my uh, suggestion to you. Great. Anything else on your side, Kurt? Nothing else on my side today. Um, we are uh, really encouraged by the reaction we've gotten to Parallels Desktop 10 across the board, and we're real pleased to bring out these Yosemite-enabled features on the very same day the Yosemite shipped. So that's all I really wanted to talk about today. I hope people enjoyed this, and Skeeter, again, thank you for your help. Oh, Kurt, as always, love working with you guys. It's always fun to play with the, uh, the benchmark virtualization software, certainly in the industry here. Uh, just a couple things for those that, that are still watching. Uh, first off, thank you for attending our Hangout. We, uh, we really enjoy doing these. You'll find a whole slew of them on the YouTube channel under uh, uh, Parallels TV is the, uh, is the channel handle for, uh, for Parallels Desktop for Mac. We also do a seri uh, series of these on Parallels Access, which is a remote control application, so by all means, take a look at those too. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback, what you thought of our sessions, if you'd like specific topics. We'd love to hear that as well. So by all means, please uh, please let us know uh, what you'd like to hear. Uh, also, if you you know want to engage with us on social media, uh, the Twitter handle is Parallels Mac, uh, along with Parallels Access at Parallels Access. Uh, we will find us on Facebook. Of course, you obviously you found us here on uh, Google Plus. So uh, please uh, stay in touch uh, and uh, thank you for your time and enjoy your afternoon. Bye now. Thank you, everyone.